Chapter 31, 3 in 1, Date When they arrived at the canteen, it was at around dinner time, so there were quite a few people. However, hospital workers don't necessarily follow regular meal times due to their jobs, so it's actually quite challenging to fill the entire hall. Xie Feng brought Yu Dong to an empty table. Sit here first, I'll go get us some food. Xie Feng said, All right. Yu Dong nodded with a smile. Xie Feng returned the smile, then headed towards the canteen windows. Dr. Xie, the porridge you requested is ready. The canteen chef said this when he saw Xie Feng, I'll go get it for you. Thank you. Xie Feng replied, Oh, you're too polite. The chef happily went into the kitchen. He soon came back with a casserole and said, It just came out of the stove, so it's still pretty hot, be careful. Thank you again. Xie Feng thanked the chef as he accepted the casserole. What's that? Xie Feng jolted, he didn't notice Xiao Yifan approaching him. Xiao Yifan lifted the lid of the casserole, causing a fragrant scent to dissipate. Xiao Yifan took a deep breath and said, Smells so good chicken and mushroom porridge, put the cover back on. Xie Feng was exasperated. Specially cooked for you Dong, give me a bowl too, I haven't had such nutritious food in a long time. Xiao Yifan licked his lips. You're joking. Xie Feng said, don't be stingy, you Dong won't be able to finish such a big bowl anyway. Xiao Yifan attempted to wheedle Xie Feng for a bowl. Didn't you just tell me earlier today that you Dong's your idol? What are you doing trying to steal your idol's food? Stingy. Xiao Yifan put the lid back on and complained to the flustered chef. Master chef, how can you only make Xie Feng special dishes? I want some of that food too. Oh ha ha, another day, another day. The chef knew that Xiao Yifan was just kidding around, so he happily played along. Xie Feng escaped and brought the casserole back to Yu Dong. He placed it on the table in front of her and said, Wait a bit. I'll go grab a bowl and a spoon, all right. Yu Dong saw Xie Feng was heading towards the utensil bar. Curious, she lifted the lid of the casserole, seeing the fragrant chicken mushroom porridge. It looked quite appetizing. Yu Dong immediately sat up with a small chuckle. Xie Feng came back and passed Yu Dong a spoon as he set down a small bowl in front of her. Yu Dong accepted the spoon with a laugh saying you're treating me like a child. Children are often crying and making trouble, how can you be one when you're so obedient? Xie Feng sat down and started to serve himself a bowl too. It's so delicious. After taking a bite, Yu Dong's eyes narrowed in happiness. How come you sound like you've never had porridge in your life? Xie Feng joked. Close enough, I haven't had porridge in seven or eight years. In her previous life, Yu Dong was a workaholic, but she still had trouble waking up in the morning, so she usually skipped breakfast even then, mostly just grabbing some fast food, how can she have time to leisurely enjoy porridge? 7 to 8 years. Xie Feng was surprised. Eh? Ah, uh, yes ha ha. Yu Dong realized what she said, but she didn't know what else to say so she could only laugh nervously. Porridge is good got the stomach. You wake up so late and often skip breakfast so take this opportunity and eat more. Xie Feng didn't question further, I'll eat more. With a nod, Yu Dong acquiesced. Xie Feng was satisfied with this and went back to his own bowl. Yu Dong looked around while she took a bite, other people were eating rice or more simple foods so she couldn't help but wonder, you've been busy the whole day, is porridge enough for you, do you want to eat something else? I had some bread earlier, I'm not that hungry right now. Xie Feng replied, oh, Yu Dong no longer continued, instead concentrating on eating her porridge. After a while, she finished, looking down at her empty bowl, she was quiet for a while before suddenly stretching the bowl out to Xie Feng. Xie Feng raised his head in puzzlement, another bowl. Yu Dong smiled sweetly, this dot is she trying to act spoiled? Xie Feng couldn't help but smile at the thought. He put down his spoon and accepted the outstretched bowl. How loving. Xiao Yifan was at a table not far from the couple, with a sigh, he exclaimed this to head nurse Liu, they're newlyweds, that's normal. Nurse Liu replied, that's not just because they're newlyweds, it's because they're in love. Xiao Yifan wondered, but Xie Feng never acted like that before. In the past, when Xie Feng was still with Anan, they never acted like that. When he became a light bulb on their dates, he never felt embarrassed, 
but now he was five meters away yet he's already blinded. How can they be loved of thee, they're only having a meal together. Nurse Liu turned her head back and said, but there is something about this young couple. The atmosphere feels too great. Right? Xiao Yifan seems to have found a kindred spirit. What is it, you're making me awkward? Nurse Liu noticed Xiao Yifan's sparkling eyes. Sister Liu, if you find someone nice, introduce them to me. Xiao Yifan took the opportunity to ask. There are so many little nurses around that secretly like you, and you're still asking me to introduce someone to you. Nurse Liu was surprised. Our city hospital only has two golden bachelors, and with one now unavailable, you can't tell me you have no one. Alas, even if there's a 3000 scoop river the water is too weak. Xiao Yifan said this with a troubled expression. Note I don't know if it's an idiom or something, but I think he's saying even if there are so many ladies liking him, their feelings or his feelings are too superficial to be meaningful. Ha ha. Nurse Liu soon finished her food and left with Xiao Yifan, after eating Xia Feng looked for his superior to get permission, then went home with Yu Dong. Don't go to work tonight, just take a day off. Xia Feng said as he drove. Un. Yu Dong also felt that she wasn't in good enough shape to do her work well. Ring, ring. Xia Feng heard his phone ringing. He took it out of his pocket and with a glance, immediately handed it to Yu Dong. Yu Dong looked at the phone screen and saw that it was Mother Xia calling. I'll put it against your ear. No need, you can just answer it directly. But auntie called you. Yu Dong wondered. Every time mum calls she ends up mentioning you at least eight times anyway. Xia Feng replied with a laugh. Yu Dong was stunned for a moment, but answered the call in the end. Mom, this is Yu Dong. Mom, Xia Feng smiled at that. Oh, Dong Dong are you with Xia Feng? Mother's eyes cheerful voice can be heard on the phone. Xia Feng is driving right now, so he couldn't answer the phone. Yu Dong explained. Oh, that's no problem. Mother Xia thought for a moment then suddenly asked, Dong Dong, do you have a cold? Your voice is a little weird. Ah, yes I had a little cold, but I'm almost all healed. Xia Feng listened with a little furrow between his eyebrows but he didn't say anything. What happened? Really, that son of mine didn't take good care of you at all. Put the phone on speaker, I'll talk to him. Mother Xu suddenly became angry. Mom, it wasn't Xia Feng's fault. I just wasn't paying attention to the weather and wore fewer clothes some time before. No that's on him too. He's older and a doctor why didn't he say anything? Mom, it really wasn't his fault. He was in Kanshan on a business trip when I got the cold. What you were sick, and he still went on the business trip. You give him the phone. Mother Xia got even angrier. Xia Feng couldn't hear what his mother was saying, but he could guess from what Yu Dong was telling her. Seeing Yu Dong anxiously defend him, he thought the situation was funny, a warm feeling welling up. Put the phone on my ear. Xia Feng saw Yu Dong's difficulty and finally asked her this. Un. Yu Dong obediently did so, mom. Mother Xia was still ranting about his lack of care towards Yu Dong when Xia Feng said this, son. Mother Xia noticed the change in voice. It's me. How can Yu Dong get sick while she's in your care? Were you just learning a bunch of nonsense in medical school? What nonsense? A doctor is taught on how to treat people, I can't just make someone not get sick, you're being unreasonable. Father Xia's arguments could also be heard through the phone. You shut up. Mother Xia yelled. Xia Feng listened to his parents banter and couldn't help but laugh hard. Yes, it was my bad. I didn't take good care of Yu Dong properly. He tilted his head and glanced at Yu Dong in the peripheral of his view. Her face was red in embarrassment. Well, it's good that you understand. Then Mother Xia suddenly lowered her voice and asked, is she looking a little embarrassed? Xia Feng glanced at Yu Dong again and then replied, Yes, son, you that the more I scold you, the more I'm helping you. Do you understand? Mother Xia whispered conspiratorially, I understand. Xia Feng nodded with a chuckle, You tricky woman. Father Xia really couldn't get used to Mother Xia's little plots. Do you want to hold your grandson soon? Then shut up. Mother Xia yelled at Father Xia again before continuing to talk to Xia Feng, speaking of, how's New Year's, I discussed it with your father, 
We both agreed that you should accompany Yu Dong this year to visit her family. A. Xie Feng froze. What a. Don't you dare work overtime in the hospital again like last year. Go tell your superiors. How can you not visit your in-laws when you just got married to their daughter? Mother Xie continued, don't think that you can bully Yu Dong just because she's defending you. Okay, I understand. Xie Feng replied, good. Now give the phone back to Dong Dong, I want to talk to her again. Xie Feng tilted his head and said, my mother wants to talk to you. Yu Dong made a little sound of surprise and put the phone against her ear, Mom, Yu Dong, I've just helped you teach that kid a lesson. Mother Xie said. Yu Dong looked at the driving Xie Feng a little guiltily. You don't need to celebrate that kid's birthday on Friday. Mother Xie said, sounding exasperated birthday this friday yu dong quickly took another glance at xie feng well i won't bother you any longer i'll be hanging up first mother xie ended the call at the other end of the phone father xie looked at mother xie and said you said that just to remind yu dong of xie feng's birthday what are you talking about mother xie disagreed they've been in love for so long how can yu dong not know when xie feng's birthday is Father Xia had no words dot but he still felt that Mother Xia was being reasonable slash since Yu Dong knows already, why did you deliberately remind her again? But in actuality, Yu Dong really hadn't known. What's wrong? We're home Xia Feng noticed that Yu Dong was in a daze as she hung up the phone so he asked her, Ah? Home? Yu Dong looked out, they really were in front of their apartment building. Go on up first, I'll go park. Un Yu Dong unbuckled her seatbelt and was about to leave. Wait a minute. Suddenly Xie Feng stretched out and pulled out a beanie. He helped Yu Dong wear her jacket and the beanie, saying, It's cold outside. When you get home, go turn on the heater straight away and wait for it to get warm before taking off your coat. Un. Yu Dong was a little dispirited when she got out of the car. Xie Feng went ahead and parked the car. When he approached the entrance to the building, he saw that Yu Dong was still standing out in front. With a frown, he hurried towards her and asked, Why are you still standing here, waiting for you? Yu Dong replied, I parked quickly, but you still just recovered from a cold. Xie Feng chided as he swiped the car to open the doors. It's just that we seldom go home together. Yu Dong said in a small voice. Xie Feng heard this and held Yu Dong's hand tightly. He didn't know what to say. The elevator arrived with a ding. Let's go home. Xie Feng led Yu Dong into the elevator. Dot. Lying in bed, Yu Dong recalled Xie Feng's thoughtfulness today. His kindness. His smiles. Her head was full of nothing but Xie Feng. In the emergency ward, worried, running with her in his arms. In the corridor, holding her hand tightly his handsome face looking towards her. Helping to refill her bowl with a smile even when she was deliberately trying to be coquettish, getting worried over her and fussing with her coat like an old mom, telling her not to catch a cold, even when she stood outside and waited for him. He didn't blame her. Yu Dong snuggled into her quilt and reached a happy conclusion, before she married him because he was convenient, then she wanted to try and like him and now dot it seems that I already like you, Xie Feng. Xie Feng was at his desk intending to prepare some experimental data. But an hour already passed, and Xie Feng hadn't looked at the papers at all. His eyes would always inadvertently drift towards Yu Dong's door. Since when have I become so distracted? Like a young lovelorn boy. Eventually, he gave up trying to do work. Xie Feng returned to his room and went to his coat. He took out the wallet Yu Dong gave him. There were a few cards in the wallet, a few bills and a silver card tucked neatly in between. Xie Feng carefully took out the card and began to read the words in it again. Dear Mr. Xie Feng, congratulations, you've acquired the invincible super beauty of the universe Miss Yu Dong. This is a token of affection from Miss Yu Dong. Remember to treat her well in the future. P.S. No matter how busy you are, you must remember to eat. Underscore. The invincible super beauty of the universe, good thing this isn't the case. Like the previous time, Xie Feng couldn't help but chuckle every time he reads the card. Otherwise how could I suit? When Xie Feng was about seven years old, 
he often saw his father being ordered around by this mother to do all kinds of work around the house. Compared to the gentle and virtuous mothers of other kids, his mother was like a big lady who was constantly spoiled by his father. Xiao Feng couldn't help but ask his father, Dad, Mom doesn't treat you well at all. Why did you want to marry her? Your mother is very good to Dad. Father Xia replied, Lies. Xia Feng didn't believe it. Let father tell a story. Father Xia said, Dad used to fight floods when he was a soldier. One day, there was a particularly big flood, and the dam was about to collapse. As a soldier, we had to let the normal people go first. On the last day, the dam broke, and it flooded dozens of villages. My comrades and I were all swept away by the flood. Father Xia said, sadness lingering in his eyes. I washed up into a ravine ten miles away. Thankfully I didn't drown, but I was unconscious for a day. Suddenly, Father Xia's voice grew gentle. The first person I saw when I woke up was your mother. I remember her muddy face and swollen eyes. Even our company commander thought that I died, and it was your mother who looked for me anyway, walking along the river there for a whole day. Father Xia said, that time. I thought that if someone worried about me that much, that they'd never give up on me no matter how dangerous it was, then they must love me very much. Oh! Xia Feng listened then intelligently nodded, Mom saved Dad. You might not understand it yet, but when you look for a girlfriend when you're grown up don't just look for a girl based on her looks. Father Xia told him, Should I look for someone to come and save me too? Xia Feng asked innocently, Silly boy. How can a man let his woman do all the saving? Father Xia lightly chastised. But mom saved dad. Little Xia Feng had a good memory. I can do the same. Forget it. Why am I arguing with a little kid? In short, when you go look for a wife in the future, find someone that can warm your heart, like how I woke up and saw your mother. At first, he thought he understood what his father said, but he probably only truly comprehended those words when he saw you dong outside the hospital early this morning. Xia Feng rubbed the wallet in his hands, back and forth, feeling the smooth surface interrupted by some lines. Xia Feng had never actually looked at the pattern before. Finally too curious. He put the wallet under the desk lamp and carefully looked. When he finally saw the pattern, Xia Feng couldn't help but smile widely. It was a big fish. Early next morning, when Yu Dong woke up, Xia Feng had already left. There was porridge and a small dish of pickles by the table, accompanied by a little note. Eat more porridge. Remember to wear a scarf when you go out. Yu Dong couldn't help but laugh. She put away the note and started to eat, the simple porridge tasting very sweet to her. After breakfast, Yu Dong took a scarf and drove to Xiaoyu studio. Dong Dong you're here. Ren Xingxin saw Yu Dong and walked over. Don't come near me. Yu Dong stopped her, saying, I just had a cold, we have to be careful, I might pass it on to you. Oh right, there are masks in the front desk drawer. Go get some, don't pass it to Xingxin. Xiang Xiaoyu said as she ate her breakfast. Yu Dong listened and went out to get a mask. You're all exaggerating. Ren Xinxin didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Dong Dong, you haven't had breakfast yet, have you? Why don't I order some more? Go ahead and eat this first. Ren Xinxin said, No need, I've eaten. Really? Ren Xinxin doubted. Really? Xia Feng made me some porridge. Yu Dong answered, Ouch, these lovebirds are advancing by leaps and bounds. Xiang Xiaoyu quipped. But why didn't he cure your cold altogether? Do you think he's a fairy? Yu Dong had no words. Do you think that medicine will get rid of sickness in seconds? No, no. Xiaoyu shook her head. There's no need for cold medicine, he just needs to hold you and suck the virus out of your lips. Go die. Yu Dong threw a pillow to Xiaoyu's face. Xiang Xiaoyu didn't dodge. Instead laughing so hard she had to lie on the sofa. Ren Xinxin was trying hard not to laugh, he arms holding her belly. No, ooh, laughing hurts. Why don't you help suck it out instead? Yu Dong lunged for Xiang Xiaoyu with a grin. Xiaoyu desperately tried to evade her advances, making Ren Xinxin laugh even harder. After the fight, Yu Dong reviewed the rest of the dubbing, then left for the radio station. Yu Dong rarely came to their radio station at this time. She could name most of her colleagues, 
but she could only say she was familiar with a few. But today on the way to Director Ma's office, many of them greeted her with enthusiasm. Knock knock, come in. Director Ma said, Director Ma. Yu Dong entered and greeted the man. Oh, no need for formalities. Director Ma stood up and cheerfully sat down on the sofa with Yu Dong. Every since your live broadcast, we've been getting overwhelmingly positive responses. The city mayor especially praised our radio station and you, you're doing an outstanding job. Director Ma praised. Director, you're flattering me. I think that any of our colleagues would have done the same in that situation. It just happens to be me. Yu Dong said. Coincidence or not, nevertheless you should be praised for doing a good deed. Director Ma continued, our boss has decided to give you a special bonus as a reward. Thank you, leader. Yu Dong smiled as she thanked him. Also, isn't it almost New Year's? Municipal TV stations are preparing for the New Year's Eve Literature and Art Scala. They require two hosts from the city's broadcasting stations to present. Its purpose is to promote and improve the image of radio and TV stations. Our station is participating, I think you should go. Ha? Huh? Yu Dong was stunned. Director, I have no talent for presenting. Don't be modest, I've heard that you often sing in your broadcasts. I've been told that the audience response is very positive. Director Ma said, it's settled. Do well. Dot. What's with this fast-paced talk? Dot. Xie Feng was walking through the office door and was startled by Kie Ming running out, almost colliding with him. What happened? Xie Feng asked Xiao Yifan when he came in. It's nothing. Xiao Yifan picked up a glass of water. Then why is he running so fast? Xie Feng was puzzled. To go to his girlfriend. Xiao Yifan said. Girlfriend? Xie Feng wondered, but it's work hours. Come on, don't be so harsh. Xiao Yifan started to explain, isn't Ki Ming busy preparing his thesis recently? Plus, you went to America then Kunshan recently. Our department is already short on people, and with you not in, me and Ki Ming were the only doctors here. I don't mind working overtime since I have nothing to do, but Ki Ming is different. He has a girlfriend to take out to eat and watch a movie with, the number of times he actually managed to do that can be counted with one hand. Just now, his girlfriend gave him an ultimatum, go out to the cinema tonight, or break up immediately. Xiao Yifan gloated. Worse, he didn't see the text until after his operation. I wonder if he can still make it. Listening to this, Xie Feng sympathized with Qi Ming. Do you want to give him a few days off? Give him a vacation? Then we'll have to work overtime. Xiao Yifan cried out. I've been doing overtime for three months. You just said that Kie Ming's girlfriend gave him an ultimatum. Let's wait until he comes back before talking about this. Xiao Yifan didn't care. An hour and a half later, a dejected Kie Ming returned to the office. Xiao Yifan and Xie Feng looked at each other. Why'd you come back so soon? Xiao Yifan said, it hasn't been long enough to finish a movie. It hasn't, probably just half a movie. Kie Ming's voice was depressed. Uh, did I just jinx it? Xiao Yifan said. Shut up, you. Xie Feng flared at Xiao Yifan and rushed to Kie Ming to say, I just talked with Xiao Yifan, do you want to go ask the director for a vacation? We can cover for you for a few days. To talk to your girlfriend again? Yeah, now that Xie Feng's back we have enough people again. Furthermore, he's married? And I'm a single dog. We don't have anything as urgent as your situation. Xiao Yifan agreed. No need, I waited for her outside the cinema for an hour and saw her come out in another man's arms. Kie Ming said calmly. What the hell? Xiao Yifan couldn't help but swear. Xie Feng also frowned. I thought about it on the way back. It was difficult to meet up even when we were together. Even on most days, we would only see each other in the hospital. Kie Ming continued self-deprecatingly, yeah, breaking up is fine, we'd both end up unhappy if we ended up married otherwise, so I'm smart ah, never falling in love, just playing the ambiguous game or the so-called short-term love. Xiao Yifan put a shoulder around Kie Ming's shoulders and said, it's alright, your buddy will take you out to a bar sometime, don't teach Kie Ming weird things. Xie Feng couldn't help but say, fine, if you think my skills are wrong you teach us. Xiao Yifan suddenly said, 
You say you're always at the hospital and the lab with less free time than us, but you dated an in for four years. Although you ultimately broke up with her, you should still tell us what you did. Xiaoming listened to this and looked at Xiaofeng in admiration. Can you not mention an an? Xiaofeng was exasperated. Fine, let's talk about you Dong then. You married her recently, it's been less than half a year and you were on a business trip for most of it. You still spend most your time in the hospital and at the lab, how much time have you actually spent with your wife besides sleeping? Xie Feng was stunned when asked this. Yes, how many meals have you had together? How many movies have you seen? How many times did you go out shopping with your sister-in-law? Xiao Ming couldn't help but ask. We ate out four times, or five times. Xie Feng tried to recall. Since you came back? Xiao Yifan asked. Since we got married. Xie Feng corrected. The men looked at Xie Feng unbelievably. What about the movies? How many times have you gone to the cinema with her? Xiao Yifan couldn't help asking. Dot. Xie Feng shook his head. Can't remember, or you have plans later? Xiao Yifan asked. We've never been. What about shopping together? You must have right. Xiao Ming asked, "Does walking around after a meal count?" Xiao Feng laughs. Xiao Feng, you should seriously take note of what just happened to me. Xiao Ming solemnly said, "I, at my very best efforts, lost my lover. That's fine, but marriage is something else. You should be careful with it." As if suddenly cured, Xiao Ming put on his white coat and went out to patrol the wards. Xiao Feng sat on his chair thinking. Before looking at Xiao Yifan and asking, Am I really being incompetent? Even if you're my best bro, my conscience won't let me say no to that question. Xiao Yifan said, Oh. Xie Feng leaned on the back of his seat, in deep thought. I say, Yu Dong never said anything to you, asked you to accompany her somewhere. Xiao Yifan couldn't help but ask. Yu Dong seems to be quite busy too. Xie Feng replied after some thought, Are you so busy that you don't even know how Yu Dong spends her time? I guess even if you sleep in the same house, you have no clue as to what she does in her day. Xiao Yifan scolded. Dot Xie Feng found that he couldn't refute his words. But you can be rest assured, according to my observations yesterday, Yu Dong still likes you. Xiao Yifan analyzed, As long as the woman still likes you, no matter what you do, She'll see you through rose-tinted glasses. But these feelings are often lost due to time you know, so you have to pay attention. Xie Feng nodded thoughtfully. Xie Feng turned towards the clock. It was 8.15, should be able to catch a movie. So he stood up and told Xiao Yifan, I'll be going back first. So early? Why are you going? Going to watch a movie with you Dong. Xie Feng replied grabbing his car keys and disappearing through the doorway, leaving Xiao Yifan sitting alone in his office shouting, Xie Feng, you arrogant show off, why are you kicking a single dog? Dot. In Xiaoyu Studios, Yu Dong was stunned as she hung up the phone. What's wrong? Xiaoyu asked. Xie Feng just invited me to go see a movie. Yu Dong was a little nervous as she replied, then go, why are you acting like an idiot? Xiang Xiaoyu looked at her blankly, it's just a little unexpected. Yu Dong said, what's so surprising about going to the movies with your husband? You're acting like you've never been together before. Xiang Xiaoyu carelessly spouted the truth, and noticing the dumbfounded Yu Dong, was also stunned. You've really never seen on together, eh? Yeah? Yu Dong nodded. Your first date? Xiang Xiaoyu couldn't believe it. Not really. We went out for dinner twice. Yu Dong said, he bought me roses on the day he came back from America. What? Something that simple you're already won over? Xiang Xiaoyu looked at Yu Dong, incredibly wronged. How can that not? Yu Dong was exasperated. I was the doing the chasing in the first place. Yes, when it comes to marriage and who's supposed to be chasing who, you clearly don't know what you're doing. Xiaoyu shook her head. I'll be leaving first. Yu Dong couldn't be bothered continuing this conversation. Wait a minute, you're just going dressed like that? Xiaoyu asked. What's the matter with what I'm wearing? Yu Dong glanced down to look at her clothes. It was neat and tidy, looking good. You have to deliberately dress up on a date. This also acts as a hint and indication that you're interested in dating him. 
Xiangxi Oi pulled Yu Dong back to her chair and took out her makeup bag pouch, intending to give Yu Dong a little makeover. Twenty minutes later, Xiangxi Oi was finished. Xia Feng bought a 9.30 movie ticket after making sure that the movie finished before 11 o'clock. He didn't want to make Yu Dong late to work. There were a number of couples in the cinema. Xia Feng stood alone at the entrance. It was evident with a glance that he was waiting for a girlfriend, Xia Feng. Finally, he heard Yu Dong's voice near the elevators. Xia Feng smiled as he turned towards the voice. Yu Dong hurried towards Xia Feng and with a breathless voice, asked, Were you waiting for a long time? Not at all. The movie hasn't started. Xia Feng walked closer to Yu Dong and noticed that her features looked more pronounced, her eyes were brighter, her lips were pink making people want to take a bite. What time does the movie start? Yu Dong asked. 9.30. Xia Feng handed a ticket to Yu Dong. Then we should go in. It's a good thing she didn't let Xi or Yu do her hair, she might not have made it on time otherwise. Wait a minute, let's go buy popcorn first. Xia Feng led Yu Dong towards the snack bar and told the clerk. Give me a couple set. Yu Dong hugged a large bucket of popcorn and looked at the two cups of coke Xia Feng was holding. She awkwardly asked, didn't you say that it isn't good to drink coke? I remembered that you like to drink it though. Xia Feng gently said, it's our first date, so I want to get you things that you like. Yu Dong flushed at Xia Feng's words. Xia Feng smiled as he led Yu Dong to the theater. During the whole movie Yu Dong's attention wasn't on the screen but on her hand that Xia Feng was holding. Similarly, Xia Feng's attention the whole time was drained on Yu Dong's light pink lips. When the movie finished, Xia Feng led Yu Dong out and to her car. I should be driving you to work, but I left everyone in the hospital. Xia Feng apologized, so, that's all right, go ahead, I'll drive myself back. Yu Dong hurriedly interrupted. Thank you for being so understanding. Xia Feng said, sure. Yu Dong then asked, are you coming home tonight? Late shift tonight. Xia Feng shook his head. Oh. Yu Dong was a little lost at this, but she nevertheless reminded Xia Feng, when you're not busy, remember to take a break. I will. Xia Feng replied, then dot you can go now. Okay dot I'm leaving. Xia Feng squeezed Yu Dong's hand before releasing it. He then slowly walked away. Xia Feng. Yu Dong suddenly called out to him just as Xia Feng was about to leave. Xia Feng turned back, puzzled. Yu Dong suddenly walked over, went to her tiptoes, and kissed the corner of Xia Feng's mouth. She barely touched his lips before immediately retreating, and shyly said, You can go now, Yu Dong. Xia Feng suddenly said, Yu Dong tilted her head in question. Xia Feng's self control finally broke as he bit the pink lips that were enticing him the whole night. Yu Dong was forced to take a step back, and she ended up leaning against the car behind her. Xia Feng followed her, using his tongue to pry open her lips. A subtle creamy scent mixed between their lips and tongues. The scent became sweeter, more intoxicating. Xia Feng didn't know how long had passed before he finally managed to let go of Yu Dong. She had melted, her body too weak to stand on her own and she heavily leaned against the car. Her wide eyes had become teary, the makeup making her appear more charming, making her pink lips fuller. Xia Feng's eyes flashed. He couldn't help but kiss her again. Yu Dong lifted a hand and gently hugged Xia Feng's waist. The two people kissing in this dim parking lot felt like they were the only people in the earth. The snow that had stopped began to fall again as if to bring out a romantic mood just for the sake of these two people. Chapter 32 You're very obedient, and I'm also good. 10 a.m. Yu Dong had woken up and immediately recalled last night's sweet kiss. She couldn't help but roll around her bed. Unexpectedly, Xia Feng who looks like a perfect gentleman can actually kiss so passionately. No wonder novels featuring the black-bellied president were so popular. Being dominated by someone you like actually feels quite good. Hey, hey. Yu Dong was amused by her brainless thoughts. After a while, Yu Dong got out of bed and went to towards her window to open the curtains. It was unusually beautiful and sunny, the sunshine filling her room and brightening everyone's day. But with Yu Dong's current mood, even in the rain and snow, everything would feel romantic to her. Because for a woman in love, 
Everything is seen through this powerful filter. Yu Dong stood in front of her window and stretched, before leaving to wash and prepare to go out. After dressing, she went out into the kitchen and surprisingly found a light blue insulated lunchbox on the dining table. When Yu Dong walked closer, she noticed a note beside the box. The familiar script made her smile and even before she started reading it, Yu Dong was already happy. I bought breakfast on the way home, and I remembered to eat dinner. I've arrived home, and I'll be sleeping first. When I wake up, I'll be checking if you've eaten. P.S. I've already eaten some. Yu Dong arched an eyebrow and opened the blue lunchbox. Four crystal clear Xiao Longbows were inside still emanating warmth. Note Xiao long bows look like mini steamed buns. Yu Dong picked up a small bun and ate a mouthful. The burst of crab tasted unexpectedly sweet. She obediently ate her breakfast, then added some words on the note before leaving. As soon as Yu Dong drove her car out through the community gates, her phone started ringing. She accepted the call after seeing that it was Xiaoyu. Xiaoyu A I just left, I'll be there in 40 minutes. Don't go to the studio, come to the World Trade Center, Xiaoyu said. The World Trade Center? Are you planning to talk about a collaboration with someone? Yu Dong asked, confused. What cooperation? We're going to get Lu Xiuan. Xiang Xiaoyu was seething mad. Lu Xiuan? What happened? Yu Dong asked, that scum, he took advantage of the fact that I went to my parents house yesterday and ran to my apartment to find Xinxin. At the thought of this, Xiaoyu's rage grew. Is Xinxin alright? Yu Dong became worried. How can she be alright? When I came back this morning her eyes were swollen, it looked like she cried all night. Xiang Xiaoyu continued to growl, you know Xinxin? Whenever something like this happens to her she thinks she'll be a bother and doesn't call. All right, wait for me, I'll be right over. Yu Dong hung up the phone. The World Trade Center was quite close to the residential area where Yu Dong lived. In less than half an hour, she parked directly beneath the Lu Group building. Dong Dong. Yu Dong got off her car and saw Xiang Xiaoyu near the entrance of Lu Group's building wearing a fiery red coat. It was really eye-catching and was particularly striking next to Yu Dong who was wearing black and white. Let's go. The two entered the building and sat in the lobby lounge to discuss their game plan. What did Lu Xiuan say to Xinxin yesterday? Yu Dong wanted to know what happened last night first. That absolute scum said he wanted to take Xinxin's baby away. I can't believe it, I've never seen such a cheap man. Xiaoyu spits. Take the baby? You mean Lu Xiuan wants the child? Yu Dong was doubtful. After previously listening to Xinxin's experiences with Lu Xiuan, it was obvious that he thought Xinxin purposely became pregnant to trap him into marriage. Lu Xiuan even said several times before that he was disgusted with the child. Yes, he said that when Xinxin gives birth, he will get a lawyer to fight for custody and threatened Xinxin to just hand over the baby willingly, or else he'd make it so that she'd never be able to see the baby in the future. Xiang Xiaoyu said, Xinxin was scared to death. So what can we do here? Talk to him? Yu Dong asked, he didn't see me at all. Xiang Xiaoyu said gloomily, I came early in the morning, and the elevators wouldn't go up. The front desk keeps telling me that Lu Xiuan was busy negotiating a collaboration with a Ville Corporation, it's obviously an excuse. The president doesn't want to let you make a scene and explode, of course they're making excuses. A Ville Corporation, that name sounds familiar. Yu Dong took out her phone to search online, but the connection speed was slow that she felt like she'd die of old age before the page finishes loading. A Ville Corporation, a famous real estate company in Singapore, CEO Kin who was originally from Jiangsu province and now lives in Singapore. Kin Yudong was stunned, and she looked at Xiang Xiaoyu. What are you looking at me for? Xiang Xiaoyu looked at Yudong strangely. Do you know a Kin? Yudong asked. Kin who? Xiaoyu asked doubtfully. Your future husband. Yudong answered in her heart. He's the president of a Ville Corporation. Yu Dong explained. Then how can I possibly how can I know? Xiaoyu shook her head. It seems that you're going to have to meet each other earlier than last time. I hope that you'll fall in love with each other again in this life. Did you think of a way? We have to talk to Lu Xiuan and warn him away. 
Xi Oyu said, looking serious, How long have you been here? Yu Dong suddenly asked, Almost two hours, Xi Oyu replied, Then it should pretty much be the same. Yu Dong estimated, then looked back at Xi Oyu and reminded her, Lu Xiuan should be sending the people from Maville Corporation down soon, I'll go look for him then, don't get too excited, remember to keep your goddess demeanor, don't scare your future husband away, can you handle him alone? Xiang Xi Oyu worried, no problem, the two women sat for another ten minutes before they finally saw Lu Xiuan arrive, come on. Xiang Xiaoyu stood up excitedly, Yu Dong looked towards the crowd, Qin really was next to Lu Xiuan. Before her rebirth, Xiang Xiaoyu regularly sent lovey dovey photos of Qin to her circle of friends, to the point that Yu Dong had to blacklist her from QQ. Yu Dong took off her coat and set it aside, she was wearing a simple beige long sleeved dress with black high heels. It wasn't very formal, but it would have to do. President Qin, I had a pleasant time talking to you, I hope we can have an opportunity to collaborate. Lu Xiuan and Qin shook hands. Naturally, we've seen the Lu group's plans, and while we're satisfied, I have to go back and discuss specifics for a collaboration. Qin laughed. That would be great. Lu Xiuan was happy. You don't need to send me off past here. Qin said. Take care, President Qin. Yu Dong saw that they were about to part. So she shouted loudly, President Kin. Kin heard a shout, so he looked back, only to see two beautiful women walking towards him. When Lu Xiuan saw the two women he immediately frowned, he could still feel his eggs aching. What do you need to talk about? Lu Xiuan knew that Xiaoyu had been looking for him since this morning. I'm looking for President Kin. Yu Dong looked at Lu Xiuan funnily. Yes, try to contain your ego why don't you? Xiang Xi or you counted with scorn. Qin then asked, I don't seem to know you. Hello President Qin, my name is Yu Dong. I'm the business manager of King Fing Architecture. Yu Dong extended a hand. Qin politely shook hands with Yu Dong. I know I'm being a bit irritating coming to you unannounced, but our designs have been handed over to your company for more than a month and we received no response. I really have no other choice, I hope you can understand. Yu Dong said, Xiang Xi or you stared at Yu Dong who was lying with such a straight face, Sister, what are you playing? Aren't we aiming for that scum man? Lu Xiuan was also baffled, didn't Yu Dong study broadcasting and hosting? When did she study architecture? Although Qin felt that it was a little abrupt, this beautiful woman came all the way here to intercept him so he didn't think it'd be right to refuse. Therefore, he nodded his head and agreed. Let's talk over there. After saying this, Yu Dong turned to Lu Xiuan and said, Lu Xiuan wouldn't mind us borrowing his company's lounge. Go ahead. Lu Xiuan would naturally agree. Qin sat down with his assistant and said to Yu Dong, Please try to be as brief as possible. I have another meeting later. Yes. Yu Dong then said, Your company wants to build a resort in the suburbs of Shanghai which is adjacent to Suzu. Therefore, our company's design refers to the style of Qing Dynasty courtyards. Combined with modern architectural methods, we intend to design dot the mountains and river nearby are beautiful, and we can lead live waters into the courtyard, or we can emulate the humble administrator's garden. Let the resort blend with the surrounding scenery. As Qin listened to Yu Dong's introduction, he felt that the resort in his heart was slowly taking shape. Compared to other companies that propose heavily modernized or European-American designs, this one was the closest to his vision. May I ask why your company decided to break current architectural trends and chose to take the Chinese route? Qin asked, moved. Because China's architecture is the best choice when it comes to landscapes? Yu Dong smiled and said, of course. Part of it is also because President Qin grew up in Suzu. We thought you would be more kind in your critique. You know that? Qin was surprised. Of course I know, your future wife talks about you 800 times a day. When Ren Xinxin committed suicide, Xiang Xiaoyu and Yu Dong had come together and thought that if Qin had known early on, he never would have collaborated with Lu Xiuan. Qin even mentioned that he had initially wanted to build a Chinese-style resort in Shenqing similar to the courtyard he lived in as a child. 
it was only that the designs depicting this style of architecture was rejected by the supervisors and was directly banned without his knowledge. He inadvertently discovered the plans later on, but by that time he had already signed a contract with Le Group. Gin would sometimes think of this missed opportunity and regret it. It was only thanks to Xiang Xiaoyu's oversharing and pain-inducing public displays of affection that Yudong could now say these words effortlessly. Manager Yu, did you bring any of the designs with you? Kin wanted to see the drawings, he was already very interested. President Kin, this is really embarrassing, because I was in such a rush, I didn't even bring a business card, let alone the design sketches. Yu Dong explained awkwardly. That's fine. Kin nodded in understanding, then turned to his assistant to say, Assistant Wang, go back and send the designs to my office as soon as possible. Yes, President. During their talk, Xiaoyu went to the front desk and cheekily asked for two cups of coffee right in front of Lu Xiuan. President Kin have some coffee. Xiang Xiaoyu put down a coffee in front of Kin and handed another cup to the assistant beside him. Drink some coffee too handsome guy. Kin listened to her words and couldn't help but smile. Xiaoyu turned around at this moment and having seen Kin smile, naturally smiled back. Kin was a little stunned before he looked down at the cup in front of him. Two golden flowers were depicted in the cup spelling Lu. Kin couldn't help but think that these two women were quite powerful. One ran to a rival company to rob them of a customer right under their noses, and the other used the enemy's own coffee to greet said customers as they're being stolen. Kin took a sip of coffee and said, okay, I'll carefully consider it after I go back and see the designs. Thank you. President Kin, Yu Dong and Lu Xiuan both sent Kin off together. Lu Xiuan then frowned at the two girls and said, Aren't you a radio host? When did you start working for a construction company? Does my work have anything to do with you? Yu Dong asked, What trouble are you trying to start? How do you even know President Kin? Lu Xiuan felt that Yu Dong was purposely doing this to mess with him. Why are you so paranoid? And I haven't even asked you yet. What did you do to Xinxin yesterday? Xiaoyu interrupted angrily. You don't have the right to meddle between the two of us. Lu Xiuan replied coldly. You. Xiaoyu saw his arrogance and was about to lift her leg to give him a mighty kick when she was stopped by Yu Dong. Lu Xiuan's recently conditioned reflexes kicked in and he took a step back, his livid face turning to shout, Security. What are you stopping me for? See if I don't wipe the floor with this shameless thing. Xiaoyu cried, you don't have to call security, I'll just say a few words then voluntarily leave after. Yu Dong dragged Xiaoyu behind her and said, first, you can't take Ren Xinxin's baby away. Lu Xiuan sneered, I know you have money and can hire a good lawyer, but will the judge actually consider choosing a single rich father over the married mother with an able-bodied family? What are you saying? Lu Xiuan's face changed. Right now Xinxin's only thinking of the baby and isn't thinking about getting married, but you're forcing her into a corner right now. That won't end well with you because after all, there are plenty of people who still like her. Yu Dong's meaning was obvious. Xinxin will be forced to find someone to marry so that the custody of her child will stay with her. Of course. We all don't want to go that far. Lu Xiuan's face suddenly turned black and terrible. Second, you shouldn't think about the collaboration between Evil and the group anymore. Yu Dong sneered and continued, You probably don't believe it right now, but I just stole your collaboration. Let this be a warning to you. After saying this, Yu Dong gave Lu Xiuan a haughty look and pulled Xiang Xiaoyu away. Dong Dong, Lu Xiuan's face. Xiang Xiaoyu cackled. Seeing that scum man get destroyed is so exhilarating. Don't you do the same thing every time you see him, goddess? Yu Dong said, I'm the goddess that destroys all scum men. Xiang Xiaoyu agreed, but began to ask, but you just talked nonsense to President Kin, will things be alright? I'll never see him again anyway. Yu Dong shrugged indifferently, it doesn't matter. Of course, if you end up marrying him, getting fooled won't be much of an issue AI there. He probably won't dare offend his wife's girlfriend. Yu Dong silently added this to her heart. Yes. Xiang Xiaoyu said, why do I feel like you're getting smarter and smarter? Back then, 
It had always been obvious that out of the three of us, I was the smartest. Wrong, you're the most beautiful. Yes. Xiang Xiaoyu was satisfied with this too. Dot. It was already 3 p.m. when Xia Feng woke up, rubbing his throbbing temple. He went into the kitchen and poured himself a glass of warm water. After a while, Xia Feng remembered the lunchbox on the table. The lunchbox sat quietly on the table as if it hadn't been moved at all. Xia Feng lifted the lid and saw that Yu Dong had left his note inside with a few words added, You're very obedient, I'm also pretty good ah, I've eaten it all, underscore carrot. Xia Feng couldn't help but chuckle as he took the note and clipped it in his notebook. Dot. After the two girls just managed to appease Ren Xinxin, Yu Dong suddenly asked Xiang Xiaoyu, What day is it today? Thursday. Replied Xiaoyu, Then after 12 o'clock is, Chapter 33 I have to wait for you. 12 o'clock midnight, at precisely 0 o'clock on a Friday. Yu Dong's familiar voice began to reverberate through the city's night sky. Hello everyone, this is FM 9666. It's now 12 o'clock and you're listening to Midnight Phantom, I'm DJ Fish Jelly. Yu Dong coughed and sounded a little unnatural as she continued, Today this fish has something to say. I need to confess something. A confession can be between an unfamiliar pair that dared to take the next step, or it can be from a person with a secret love. Yu Dong's voice that traveled through the airwaves sounded extraordinarily gentle. Of course. A confession will naturally happen between two people who have already fallen in love with each other. This confession is the catalyst to fate. A pair of not quite strangers will notice the other because of their confession. Someone with a crush will harvest sweetness and beauty from their confession. Of course, it also depends on whether they're successful or not. Yu Dong smiled as she added that last sentence then said, but why would a confession happen between two people already in love? For example, between couples, husband and wife, old friends. It starts with a person growing feelings, then a confession, then you fall in love and get married. You believe that you'll love each other forever, but in married life, loving words aren't expressed as often as before. Time changes us. Maybe someday you'll no longer be sure of the love in each other's eyes. Maybe you'll no longer be sure of your own love. But with the presence of family and responsibility hanging over you, you'll simply stay. Step by step love becomes kinship, and when you finally arrive at that sunset beach, when you only have each other to depend on, you'll chat. The old man will ask the old woman if she would have still loved him if they never had a child. The old lady will also ask if the old man never had an affair during the busiest years of his career. When you look back, you'll inevitably find a lot of things, so many things that the sentence I love you, that simple sentence, would have fixed so many misunderstandings that could have been resolved, that could have led to a life with less regret. So this fish jelly feels that confessions are best done during the young and frivolous years. Fish jelly then took out a piece of paper she had prepared in advance and said, Today, this fish jelly will be the first, to set an example. I want to confess, right here, right now. I'm going to read out a love poem which was written by Pushkin to his lover Kern. I'm giving this to you now, to my lover. Fish Jelly's beautiful and emotional voice stirred the countless lonely souls listening. Note instead of using the MTL I found the actual poem so I'll be using their, copyright 2013, John Doherty, translation because he translated it so beautifully. I recall the wondrous chance, there before me I saw you. Such a brief and a passing glance. Such beauty brilliant and true, in the clutches of hopeless despair, in the worries of life's hurried storm, for long I heard a voice so fair, and dreamt of a lovely form, years passed, a rebellious tempest's blare, scattered all former dreams, and I forgot your voice so fair, your form born of heavenly schemes, in solitude, in gloomy desolation, quietly my days dragged along, without God and without inspiration, without tears, without life, without love, to my soul came an urge to dance, and there again I saw you, such a brief and a passing glance, such beauty, brilliant and true, and my heart beat in adulation, and to it came the rebirth of, God, and divine inspiration, and life, and tears, and love, after Yu Dong finished reading the poem, she started playing a quiet and gentle song, as if to bring all the listeners into the beautiful and ambiguous atmosphere she had created. 
After the song ended, everyone returned, and a slew of messages began to appear on her computer. Some were simple, the poem is beautiful, the host's voice is so lovely, the host is right. People should talk about their feelings to their lovers more. Host, is the person you like listening? He must be so happy. Some were also truthful. Fish jelly are you showing off your love? Fish jelly is usually so sensational, this isn't just about reading a poem, is it? Host you schema. Caught off guard by dog food. Dot. It wasn't just random listeners that sent messages, Xiao Ye fan, a loyal fish jelly fan was also thinking of sending a text. God. Really? Do I tell Xia Feng? Tell him? But I've been abused by your wife when I tried to butt in before, am I going to be abused again? Don't tell him? Xiao Yifan felt a little immoral. On the one hand he feels jealous, on the other hand, his morals are urging him. Such a difficult decision, ah. What are you doing? Xia Feng looked at the silly Xiao Yifan standing in front of him. Xiao Yifan couldn't help it anymore and moved towards Xia Feng. After making a series of complicated faces, he said, When you're free, listen to Yu Dong's program online. Listen, you don't need to tell me, I try to listen to her program whenever I'm free anyway. Yu Dong's program was broadcasted every day, and while Xia Feng doesn't listen to every single one, as long as he had the time for it, he would listen. I said it anyway. Xiao Yifan then huffily walked away to the emergency department, God, he's eating way too much dog food recently. Xia Feng shrugged his shoulders in puzzlement and went back to explaining some things to the nearby nurse. Dot. Although the poem was really just to pave the way for Yu Dong's love letter to Xia Feng, she definitely isn't willing to admit it. So ignoring the messages that guessed the truth, the program started to accept calls. Hello. Yu Dong answered the phone. Hello Fish Jelly, I'm Mr. Strong number one. A rough male voice came from the other end. Number one? Yu Dong wondered. Good host, I'm Mr. Strong number two. Another softer male voice could be heard. Then several voices from the background started shouting numbers, number three, number four. Oh, you guys are quite lively over there. Yu Dong laughed. Fish jelly, we Mr. Strong's numbers one five all just want to ask you something. Mr. Strong number one said. Oh, what is it? Yu Dong was curious. We just made a bet. Number three and I both think that you're deliberately trying to show your love to someone tonight. Mr. Strong number one continued, but the other Mr. Strongs feel that you intentionally set up tonight's topic so you can read that love letter. Who got it right? Dot Yu Dong had no words. Is there even a difference? I guess there isn't. Then the money will be evenly distributed, one person gets 50 yuan. Mr. Strong shouted to the other numbers around him. Yu Dong silently hung up. The truth is out. I want to ask so I'm going to call too. Hope I can get through. Ha ha dot I just want Fish Jelly to know that I'm laughing. Yu Dong warily connected another call. Fish Jelly. When Yu Dong successfully connected, a hoarse and exhausted voice could be heard. Blame. You are to blame. What's wrong, Miss Beauty? It was a woman's voice, so she was Miss Beauty. I just listened to you on the radio and was so excited I rushed to my crush to confess and then, and then, he said he has a girlfriend, I just lost my love. The sister cried sadly. So what, at least now you can change your target, perhaps the next one will be even better for you. Yu Dong advised. Really? But there are so many, which one is the right one? Yu Dong realized that something was wrong. This beauty sounds drunk. Sister, where are you now? Are you drunk? I'm at a stall outside my university and I just drank a bottle of beer, sure enough, she was drunk, Yu Dong was about to persuade the girl to go back home before the beauty suddenly shouted, ah, the university's most handsome prince is walking over, I'm going to confess, oh no, Bay Iru, I like you, you be my boyfriend, everyone collectively held their breaths, five seconds later, her computer beeped, everyone sent messages again, tonight's beauty is a heroine among women, the handsome prince just got taken, host, be my matchmaker too, the handsome prince just got his identity revealed, omg, I want to go to that university and watch the fun, Yu Dong felt very tired as she opened her microphone and said, if you can recognize miss beauty's voice, please help her, located at a stall at the entrance of a university, 
She just confessed to the handsome Prince Bay Iru if you have any knowledge regarding her whereabouts, please contact her roommate or send her back to her dormitory. Feeling like she just worked for half a year, Yudong thought that tonight's broadcast was really tiring. At the end of her broadcast, Senior looked at Yudong with a broad grin, looking like he just watched a comedy skit all night. When she came back home, the house was cold and dark. It seems that Xiafeng hasn't returned. Yudong habitually turned on all the lights in the living room to make the place feel a little warmer. She changed to her slippers and went to take a shower. Ever since Xiafeng told her not to, Yudong no longer washed her hair in the evening. When she finished her bath, Yudong poured herself a glass of milk and sat cross-legged on the sofa. Ignoring the hum of the heater, the room was quiet. What time will you be back tonight? Yudong sent out a text. There have been a few unexpected emergencies tonight, I'll probably be home late. Go ahead and sleep early. Xiaofeng returned. But I have something to do tomorrow morning. Yudong blinked then ran to her bedroom to take a pillow and blanket. She then spread it out and directly fell asleep on the sofa. On this quiet night, a single light was on in the otherwise dark apartment complex. The single light was like a lighthouse in the night sky, illuminating someone's way home. At 4.30 a.m., Xiaofeng turned the doorknob and quietly entered the house. Almost as soon as he looked up, he saw Yu Dong sleeping on the sofa. Why is she sleeping in the living room again? Xia Feng's head throbbed at Yu Dong's disobedience. Xia Feng took off his coat and changed his slippers. He approached Yu Dong with the intention of carrying her back to her bedroom. Huh? As he neared the sofa, Xia Feng noticed a note on the coffee table. When you get back, remember to wake me up. You have to. Were you waiting for me? Xia Feng was a little stunned. He turned towards Yu Dong and lowered himself until he was at her eye level. After watching her sleeping face for five minutes, he really couldn't bear to wake her up. You have to. Xia Feng looked at the note again and finally decided to wake her up. Yu Dong. Xia Feng gently patted her shoulder. Until the Yu Dong opened her eyes in a daze. Why didn't you go to sleep in your room? Why did you ask for me to wake you up? Xia Feng asked to wait for you. Yu Dong struggled to sit up. What's the matter? Xia Feng wrapped her blanket around her shoulders more securely. I have something to say to you. Yu Dong smiled. Couldn't you have told me later when you wake up? Xia Feng laughed. You would be asleep by then and I'm going to be busy tomorrow, I might not have the time to say it. Yu Dong shook her head, then we can talk about it later, but I need to say it today. Yu Dong beamed at a puzzled Xia Feng and said, happy birthday, this is the first birthday I get to spend with you, of course I have to wait for you, chapter 34 you are my son, I am your home, it was sunny today, the small park downstairs was full of children playing, the weather in Shanghai was usually like this, as long as the sun was out, even if it was winter people would feel like it was spring, perhaps spring had crept in early, when Yu Dong was about to leave, she looked back towards Xia Feng's room, her expression warm, sometimes when it comes to two people trying to get along, one has to give, and one has to receive. It seems that Yu Dong preferred being the former. Does everyone meet such a person? Where your happiness is based on their happiness. Like a sunflower chasing the sun. Yu Dong looked through a window to the sun outside and wondered, if I could emit such warmth, can I become your son? Dot. Yu Dong went to the studio to help Ren Xinxin review the final cuts of dubbing. Then she had lunch and drove to the radio station. Director Ma. Yesterday, Yu Dong had been informed that Director Ma wanted to speak with her, so she came in this afternoon. Come in Yu Dong, have you had lunch? Director Ma put down the papers he had been reading and asked kindly. Thank you for your concern, I've already eaten. Yu Dong replied with a smile. That's good. You have to pay attention to your health. Although you're still young and healthy, you still have to be extra careful since you host the midnight program and therefore sleep so late. Director Ma advised. I will, thank you for your concern, sit down and let's talk. Director Ma stepped out from behind his desk and sat down on the sofa with Yu Dong. I listened to your program last night. Ah? Yu Dong was somewhat surprised. I have to say, it was very energetic and lively. 
Director Ma praised, especially the love poem you read out loud by Pushkin, it was as if I had returned to my twenties, I was still pursuing my wife then, yes, that's good. Yu Dong smiled, right, my wife listened with me last night, and she wants me to ask about what happened between the handsome prince and the beauty. Director Ma said, waiting for Yu Dong to give him the details. This dot I don't know either. Yu Dong was embarrassed. If I find out anything new, I'll definitely tell you. Oh. Director Ma was somewhat disappointed. Anonymous callers can be really hard to track down. Hee <laughs> hee. Yu Dong could only laugh embarrassedly. Oh, anyway, that question wasn't what I wanted to ask. I mainly wanted to ask you how the preparations for the New Year's Eve program is going. Director Ma just remembered what he actually wanted to talk about. I'm planning on singing as my act. Yu Dong thought about it and ended up deciding that she would just casually go up the stage and sing some song. That's good, you sing quite well. Have you chosen the song? Director Ma inquired. I'll decide by tomorrow. There were five days left until rehearsals, so Yu Dong wasn't very worried. Then you must sing well. Make sure you sing with the spirit and might of our radio station. What does the spirit and might of a radio station even look like? Yu Dong thought in her heart as she nodded. By the way, to show our support, the station specifically made a special styling budget. Director Ma pulled out a business card and handed it to Yu Dong and said, Go to this salon and get some help with your clothes and make up for the day. Don't try to save money. Blossom Sparrow? Yu Dong saw the business card and was stunned. What the hell is going to happen at the event? This Blossom Sparrow was the best styling studio in China. How many big name stars came to this studio before walking the red carpet? The point is, this studio is known for its gorgeous and high end styles. I heard many stars go to that studio for styling tips. Director Ma said proudly, Director, you see, ah. Isn't the hosting style of our station mostly easy humor, relaxed entertainment? If I go with such a grand look, isn't that the opposite of our station's might and spirit? Yu Dong continued, as a guest in this cross-platform event if I dress like this, won't I just be telling people that I came to attract attention? Even the actual singers who were invited wouldn't be dressing so grandly, this event isn't the red carpet, this will inevitably be embarrassing, ah. That's just going to show that our radio's station isn't just relaxed and humorous, but also dignified, elegant and noble. Director Ma said. Yu Dong thought for a moment, then continued to persuade him. Look, Director, I'm going to be a guest in this event. If I wear something that overpowers the host, won't I just be a nuisance? After all, we're attending this event to show solidarity. Don't worry about that. Director Ma sneered. The host had dinner with me two days ago and said that there weren't any beautiful women in radio stations. This time let him see, he thinks that only TV stations have beautiful female hosts. Remove their makeup, remove the good lighting, and the girl selling fruit across the street from my neighborhood can compete with them. Dot. So that's why? Also, why are you paying so much attention to the girl who sells fruit from across your house, leaving the radio station? Yu Dong went straight to Blossom Sparrow Studio. Yu Dong had never thought she would come here one day as a customer. Hello. The receptionist was a sweet looking girl. When she saw Yu Dong enter, she politely inquired, Do you have an appointment? Hello, I'm Yu Dong. My radio station should have made an appointment in advance. Yu Dong said. The front desk sister confirmed her appointment and then brought Yu Dong to the VIP area. She then turned and said, Please wait here while I call the stylist over, okay? Yu Dong nodded as she sat down. Yu Dong? Suddenly there was an uncertain voice calling out to her. Yu Dong turned and saw a black haired beauty on the other end of the sofa. The beauty was smiling at her, and Yu Dong finally recognized her, exclaiming, Tao Tao, un. Tao Tao excitedly ran over to sit next to Yu Dong. What a coincidence! Yu Dong laughed. My agent brought me here to get styled for an award ceremony I'm attending. Tao Tao said, It seems that you're popular. Although Yu Dong stopped watching idol dramas, in her previous life, she used to watch the many shows of this future idol drama queen. What popular are, 
I just finished filming this TV series, and it had a cold reception. A lot of TV stations are broadcasting it during the day, or at midnight, the ratings aren't very high. Tao Tao sighed, recently my agent introduced me to another series, but the director said my baby face isn't suitable for the heroine. My agent is telling me to get a facelift. Yu Dong blinked. So the original reason for Tao Tao's plastic surgery in her previous life was this. Have you agreed? Yu Dong asked. Tao Tao shook her head and said, I didn't want to, but my agent has been telling me that the series was going to be a hit, and everyone in the industry does cosmetic surgery anyway. But I was still hesitant, and I later remembered that you told me never to do cosmetic surgery so finally decided not to do it. Anyway, I think I'm not bad at acting, and I'm still growing so it's no big deal. I'm sure that in the future I'll be popular. Yu Dong couldn't help but smile, I just prevented a vampire face. No Chinese vampires are a little different from western vampires. Believe me, you'll be popular soon. Yu Dong remembered that Tao Tao's first TV series wasn't popular in China but later exploded in Korea and Japan. She later became a hot topic. Excuse me. A pleasant male voice interrupted their conversation. Is Miss Yudong here? Yes, that's me. Yudong stood up. Hello, I'm your stylist. My name is Adi. Adi was a white, somewhat feminine man. Hello, please follow me. We'll pick out your dress then I'll style you based on the dress. Adi stood aside to let her in. Yudong and Tao Tao said their goodbyes, then Yudong followed Adi into a room full of sparkling dresses, making her squint. Do you have any other clothes? Yu Dong asked. The head of your radio station specifically asked that we choose something glamorous. Adi politely refused. Don't you think that they're all a little too exaggerated though? Yu Dong asked bitterly. Adi smiled and said nothing. Director Ma, is your aesthetics stuck in the 70s? Yu Dong felt her face going green. Do you think I'll be going up the stage to croon at the audience? Note the MTL said something about the era of beaches but I don't really know what that means, so I just picked an era with a cookie sense of fashion? Dot. City Hospital Xiaoyifan was buying a cup of coffee with Xia Feng. He then turned to his friend and said, Today's your birthday, let me buy you a cup of coffee for my birthday. Aren't you a little too perfunctory? Xie Feng took a sip of the coffee. Isn't it already nice of me to remember in the first place? Xiao Yifan replied. Xie Feng didn't reply. He just suddenly smiled. What are you smiling for? Dot, is it your spring heart? Xiao Yifan asked. It's nothing. Xie Feng replied. By the way, the hospital just issued a notice to all the departments to sort out their new year shift schedules. Xiao Yifan asked. Are we doing the usual three days per person? Xie Feng froze, then muttered thoughtfully, it's almost New Year's Day, no kidding. Xiao Yifan said, when did your birthday not lead to New Year's? Yifan, Xie Feng started to say, do a six day shift this year. Six days? Are you crazy? No, you're just trying to kill me. Xiao Yifan cried out. Xie Feng just looked at him, fluttering his lashes. Don't look at me like that, makes me want to vomit. Give me a reason first. Xiao Yifan couldn't stand it anymore and told him to stop. I might go to Yu Dong's family home. After hearing this, Xiao Yifan was somewhat surprised but figured this was a long time coming. You. Are you sure about this? Xiao Yifan still couldn't help but ask. Un. Xie Feng smiled as he nodded without hesitation. Oh my god, don't smile so much okay. Xiao Yifan felt like he'd just lost 10,000 health points. God. When Xie Feng was dating Anan, he never felt like this. Xie Feng sipped his coffee, but the smile in his eyes didn't dissipate at all. Can you at least tell me what happened? Xiao Yifan realized something. Did you listen to Yu Dong's broadcast last night? Xie Feng was surprised. This was the second time Xiao Yifan mentioned last night's broadcast. They both returned to their office, and Xie Feng turned on the computer, went to Yu Dong's radio station website, clicked Midnight Phantom, and started downloading. Xiao Yifan looked over Xie Feng's shoulder and couldn't help but spit, you're just listening to it now? I have my phone notify me when it's out, I download and listen to it the moment I can. Xie Feng ignored Xiao Yifan's complaints, put on his headphones, 
and listen to Yu Dong's affectionate and gentle voice. So it turned out that this was your birthday present to me. Xia Feng had always considered himself a rational person. He could analyze things objectively, calmly, and from many different angles. But when it came to Yu Dong, it seems that no matter from what angle, he sees nothing but flowers in full bloom. Every word, every hug, every kiss gives him strength. If home is your harbor, your charging station, your haven, Xia Feng thinks, then Yu Dong is my home. Chapter 35 I'll tell you now, Xia Feng seldom left work on time. But tonight he had the rare opportunity to leave early. He didn't know why, but he couldn't wait to see Yu Dong, so he drove to her radio station and listened to her broadcast. As Yu Dong said her closing remarks, Xia Feng's eyes kept straying towards the building doors. Finally, he saw Yu Dong walking out with a scarf around her neck. Yu Dong. Xia Feng got out of his car and waved at Yu Dong with a smile. At first, Yu Dong looked around cautiously, but when she realized that it was Xia Feng, she ran towards him. How come you're here? Yu Dong asked. I just felt that I haven't picked you up in a while. Xia Feng adjusted Yu Dong's scarf that had become undone due to her haste. I drive myself to work every night. Why do I need you to pick me up? Yu Dong laughed. But I want to. Perhaps it was because of the dim lighting, but Yu Dong felt that Xia Feng's eyes looked very gentle tonight. Yu Dong didn't know if it was the way Xia Feng looked at her, or if this atmosphere was lacking ambiguity, but she became somewhat uncomfortable. She lowered her head, scuffing the ground with her shoes. A woman's feelings were strange. When they don't like someone they can boldly flirt with the person, but with someone they like. They would get nervous and shy. Yu Dong had started to care about Xia Feng, so she began to overthink things. She began to like Xia Feng more and more. If one day this relationship doesn't meet her expectations, she would be devastated. Yu Dong had long been worried about this, but she never thought about this idea for very long, as she felt uneasy at the mere thought of it. So, like in her previous life, she would exhaust all her strength so that she wouldn't have the energy to think such depressing thoughts. Yu Dong truly didn't want to be pessimistic, she didn't want to lose Xia Feng, didn't want to treat him as an objective. She just wanted to be happy with him. What are you thinking of? Xia Feng lightly knocked on Yu Dong's head. Ah! Yu Dong raised her head, and her round eyes were bright. I'm not thinking of anything. Then what are you doing with your head down? Xia Feng obviously didn't believe such an obvious lie. I was laughing. Xia Feng looked at her, puzzled. Yu Dong smiled and said, You came to pick me up so I'm happy, but I don't want you to know and find out that I'm so easily flattered. You. Xia Feng couldn't help but laugh. He took Yu Dong's hands and asked, Are you feeling cold? Yu Dong shook her head. Let's go take a walk. Xia Feng said. Yu Dong was a little surprised at this but she didn't refuse. Xia Feng must have something he wanted to say. The streets were quiet, they were particularly empty at this early hour. Occasionally, a taxi would pass by them, deliberately slowing down to see if they needed a cab. Xia Feng, holding Yu Dong's hand, walked along the straight road aimlessly. I haven't gone out walking like this for a long time. Xia Feng suddenly said. It's so quiet. Do you like the silence? Yu Dong asked. It feels calm. Xia Feng thought that he could somewhat enjoy this kind of tranquility. But I don't like it very much. Yu Dong looked at the distant neon signs, her voice a little bleak, it makes me feel lonely. She didn't know why, but at this moment Yu Dong felt a heavy sense of desolation. She felt like a lost bird, trying to find its way home, like a wanderer who had been away for a long time. Tightening his hold on Yu Dong's hand, Xia Feng turned towards her and said, I'll accompany you, Un. It might have been because her past life was tainting her current emotions, but Yu Dong's answer was somewhat strained. Today the hospital asked us to submit the duty sheet for the upcoming New Year's holiday. Xia Feng changed the topic, I'm not going to be on duty this year. Yu Dong brightened at this. Then you can relax and rest, yeah? Xia Feng nodded, then asked her carefully. So dot can we take this chance and visit my father-in-law and mother-in-law? Yu Dong froze at this. Her eyes widened in shock and there was some joy, but her expression also held a complex look as she gazed at Xia Feng. What's wrong? Xia Feng asked softly, 
Are you unwilling? Yu Dong hurriedly shook her head. I've been waiting for you to take the initiative and mention this yourself. This time it was Xia Feng's turn to be stunned. He was a little guilty as he told Yu Dong, Sorry, I was being incompetent, I should have asked earlier. Yu Dong shook his head again. If I forget important things like this in the future, you must remind me. Xia Feng said. I don't think you've properly thought this through. Yu Dong said. After all, they didn't get married because they fell in love. Yu Dong wasn't sure Xia Feng's feelings for her had reached this level of intimacy. Properly thought this through, he had always thought that any misgivings he had during the early days of their relationship were well hidden. Xia Feng now realized that Yu Dong had actually known about them the whole time and simply didn't pressure him. Yes, she had always been mindful to the feelings of the people around her trying to do what she wants to do but never forcing her ideals onto others. Yu Dong, you know dot is there anything you want to ask me? Xia Feng held both of Yu Dong's hands and looked at her in the eye. Perhaps his warm hands tightly holding hers gave her the necessary courage. Yu Dot do you like me? Yu Dong asked, her eyes stormy. Ever since Yu Dong realized that she really liked Xia Feng, she had become more and more afraid to ask this question. If he answered no, Yu Dong can no longer stay at his side. She was so afraid that she would end up experiencing her past life again. Her rebirth made Yu Dong's body younger, but her soul was still scarred by ten years worth of loneliness. Sometimes, as a person grows older, they become more and more fragile. Look at me. Xia Feng lifted Yu Dong's face with both hands. The lights of the distant neon signs were reflected in Yu Dong's eyes. I like you. Xia Feng said earnestly, I admit that I've been confused, surprised, and even worried at times, but you dot you're a girl people can't help but like. You're only 22 years old, you're supposed to be having the time of your life, but I can't understand why I feel such heartache for you especially when I come home and find you asleep on the sofa with all the lights on, curled up into a tight ball. The neon reflected in Yu Dong's eyes blurred as she burst into tears. She felt that her lonely wandering soul had finally found a warm harbor. Don't cry, Xia Feng said in a panic, his hands trying to wipe away her tears. It was no use though, the more tears he swept away. The more they fell and he had no other choice but to bring Yu Dong into his arms. Originally her tears were just for Xia Feng, but as she leaned on his shoulder, she cried for love, for loneliness, for the past ten years of fruitlessly waiting. There will always be people in this world who cling to the idea of true love. To believe that somewhere out there, a person made for them is looking too. So Yu Dong waited year after year, looking for her other half. Many years were lost. Yet she still didn't find that person. Through the loneliness and the criticism, as she grew older, she continued to wait, alone. Well, I guess just let it all out. Xia Feng eventually gave up on coaxing Yu Dong and just let her vent. Xia Feng didn't actually know why Yu Dong suddenly cried so hard, but he wanted to be with her and hold her as she did so. Yu Dong didn't know how long she cried. She felt as if she had returned to the day she was reborn. Having cried so hard she felt dehydrated and faint. After letting all those emotions out, Yu Dong was embarrassed, eyes red like a shy rabbit. Your face is swollen. Xia Feng's face showed an obvious fondness. Swollen and beautiful. Yu Dong's voice was still rough from crying. Yes, you're the prettiest. Xia Feng indulged her as he took her hand again. Let's go back. Wait a minute. I have something to tell you. Yu Dong held Xia Feng back. Yes? Xia Feng stopped, turning back to Yu Dong. You should know that I like you. Yu Dong blushed at her words, but she firmly continued, I like you too. I wanted to tell you. From Yu Dong's past actions this was obvious to Xia Feng, but this sentence, when said so resolutely, still made his heart tremble. This wasn't the first time Xia Feng had kissed Yu Dong, but at this moment, he desired this like never before. It was as if they could reach the deepest parts of the other's heart through tender lips and lingering townges. At this silent street, past the bare trees and dim street lights, this kissing couple was the last thing that could be seen that night. It's easy to accept someone else's love for you because their feelings are their own. But your own love is much harder to grasp because you know exactly how you feel. Note, she's saying other people's feelings isn't up to her. 
But dealing with your own feelings is way harder because you know exactly how much you love someone. Human beings are the simplest, yet most complex being in the world. They can easily compromise yet are also very persistent. But no matter what, I hope you have, on will have the happiness everyone deserves. Dot. On the way home, Yu Dong fell asleep. Perhaps all that crying tired her out. Xie Feng stared at the road ahead his thoughts filled with nothing but a crying Yudong. It seems that Yudong has a past that didn't quite fit her young age. Her tears didn't come from frustration or any love sickness. It came from a mentality that could only be built from years of experience. I don't know what hurt you, but from now on, I'll be here to protect you. Xie Feng gently carried Yudong out of the passenger seat. The change in temperature had Yudong unconsciously burrowing into Xie Feng's arms. He held her a little tighter as he slowly walked towards the elevator. When he got to their front door, Xie Feng found that he couldn't open the door with Yudong in his arms. He didn't want to put Yudong down, so he could only wake her up. Yudong. Xie Feng gently called out. Un Yudong's eyes were still unfocused as she asked. Are we home yet? We're here, come lean against me, I need to open the door. Xie Feng said. Yu Dong instead shuffled around, taking the key from Xie Feng's pocket, saying, I ll open it. Xie Feng carried Yu Dong into her bedroom, safely tucking her in, as he fixed her blanket. He sees Yu Dong looking at him so Xie Feng smiled and said, Go ahead and sleep. Xie Feng, I suddenly feel a sense of belonging. Yu Dong said, Xie Feng's hand that held her blanket went stiff, his heart becoming distressed. You were uneasy all this time, it seems that he didn't put enough effort. So how long will this sense of belonging last? Xie Feng chuckled. Um dot I hope it'll last until we're too old to walk. Yu Dong thought about it then replied, I'm afraid I'll be relying on you to lead me then. Xie Feng laughed. Yes, after all, you're so much older than me. Yu Dong laughed with him, thank you in advance. After listening to this, Yu Dong grinned, good night. Xie Feng left a kiss on Yu Dong's forehead before he stood up. I'm sorry I said it so late, but I'm telling you now, I like you.